Hey guys, how's everything going? This is Jacer. In one of my previous videos, I've talked about the different levels of front end engineers, right? Um, I've summarized it as uh, levels based on what we're supposed to build, like a small fraction of a component or an, a whole app or multiple ads. And as our levels goes up, uh, we are supposed to think more about some high level problems. So how to save money for the company. In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the problems. It is called a front-end infra. In large companies, there tend to be a team called front-end infra. So what is it and what it tries to solve? So think about a case where we're building one project, have a small team, super agile. We meet a problem, we work together, solve it. We don't need to think about the code quantity. Uh, we don't need to think about dependency problem. We just solve it and move fast. And if we, if we break something, just to re, we factor it and uh, everything seems so cool. Everything is nice. And now we are going to build multiple projects. You might think, okay, we just do, we just, things should, should, not, should be the same, right? We just, uh, uh, we just uh, continue our best practice we've learned, but you, you might realize that, okay, we are repeating ourselves. We're doing the same work over and over and over again. That's the situation where front end infra comes in. Okay. So in case of what we're repeating, I summarize into several parts. So the first one is boilerplate. We are going to create a new new project, a new repository for code. We we need to choose a tech stack, right? Uh, in my experience, every time we build a new project, we tend to discuss about the tech stack. Like it's for me, actually, it's a waste of time. It's it's meaningful uh, in some cases, but as a whole, for a big for a company, discussing on the tech stack is meaningless. We should just focus on one, basically one tech stack and just uh, stick to it and learn deep, right? Learn about using it and find a problem and improve ourselves based on that tech stack and try to improve it. So together on one, one tech stack. So the solution as a front-end infra for this problem boilerplate is to use templates. I guess, yeah, we just uh, try to uh, maintain that one template and every time a new project uh, is needed, we just use a template as magic and we can just uh, get the boilerplate uh, instantly, right? It's It reduced the cost of discussion and thinking about what, what tech stack we want to use. And of course there's a risk, this maintenance cost you know, it's it's not easy to maintain a a a, a nice and a working and a less buggy template, and also there is a risk of a bad choice. What if your tech stack or your chosen is not suitable for uh, the modern development? It's not mod. It's not uh, w w well prepared for the future, right? It's there's some risk of that, and uh, maybe the leader of that project is. He's dumb. He's not very good. He's he's not. He cannot foresee the future needs. Well, that's the risk. And also, if we're using templates, we are literally um, telling other people that we won't use the newest technology as, as that fast, right? It will be slow in adoption of new stuff. So yeah, that's the risk. And okay, we now get our. Uh, boilerplate, we're start coding, and we soon realize that because we have multiple projects, we have the need to share our code. So how do we share code? You might think, like we, it, be, it might be a YouTube function, we might be a component, well, it might be a full set of server code. Well, it's simple. We we'll just uh, create some private, private uh, sharing service, like a private NPM, etc., and allow us to share the code. Well, there's still a risk. Now, before we were working on this one project, if you want to, if you want to change something, we just change it, right? We separate it by files, by modules. That's good, 
But now, if we want to share it, the code is not used in one project. We're using multiple projects. So obviously, we're requiring higher code standard, right? It must be good to be shared. We need to think about how it could be reusable. Before, we might just think for like one hour and get it done. But now, we need maybe think it for days, right? We need to make it uh, reusable and at high quality. And also, if you ship it and a lot of projects using your code, it's very difficult to keep it updated. You say, okay, I patched the version, I bump it up, version a big major version, or I fix it. Now, how could you get every project who using your code to get to, to update it? Right? You, if you are not using monorepo, you're using multiple pro, rep, repositories, it's almost impossible to keep everyone updated. Also, because now it's coupled, you, there is a risk of you breaking everything, right? You say you share a module, you, you just add some changes to it. If without robust testing, you might just breaking some, you might just break something because your module, your package might be used in some situations, in some fashion that you don't expect. Yeah, right? Because people are creative. Other members might just use your code for some other reasons. And then voila, you just break the whole project. You don't know. And also it has a higher maintenance cost, right? Yeah, with everything, it's about cost. Okay, about sharing code. And you might think still, okay, why I'm building this button over and over again? Why did these designers just design something similar but not exactly the same? So you naturally think, okay, maybe we can share the design together, right? Well, that's natural. It's called design system. Well, it is cool. It reduces cost for when you're building, pro building a new project. But it's the same as the sharing code. It has the same risks, like like higher code standard. Well, you should, you have to build the design system components, right? Either React, Vue, or web, uh, web components. Anyway, it requires higher co code standard. It's difficult to keep updated. It's coupled, it has higher maintenance costs. And also, basic on the, uh, speaking of the design, now we are using the same design system. It leads to compromise design for its individual project. You know, before we just have design, different designs for different projects, we can just have different design, right? Just for the best. But now we're using, forcing us to use the design system so the design might be compromised. Well, you may just, uh, okay, talk to designer. I only have this button, so you have to use it. But designer might, be, might think, okay, it will be, uh, it would be better if you use something else, but we don't, we don't want to, and we won't. So the design system is more about designers, not the, is not the for programmers. Um, yeah, the risk is uh, compromise, compromise design. And it also, just as the coding, it requires higher design standard. So yeah, that's the risk. After we're building the product, we need to build our code and do testing, right? So the, so the solution for this part is that uh, we just unify the CI and test infra. We don't want every project to have their own CI and uh, to, to do the testing. We want to do, do them as a whole so, so, so that each team doesn't need to worry about the, the, the CI, about testing, about building everything. We just, we just focus on building the stuff and uh, get, it, get it shipped, all right? Get, get it deployed. It's, uh, it's, so, it's, it's so natural to do that. So we need to build this stuff. And the risk is, of course, reliability. You just to say, okay, the test infra is break, breaks down. It will stop all the projects to be to be tested right to be um, to be deployed and also if you want if you change some syntax change some change some uh usage of your uh utilities you need to consider the backward compatibility compatibilities for a different project they may still using the the older version think about that you're using the uh, con uh, uh the container they have different versions right so you need to think about that when everything is built and tested, now we're going to serve it. Well, this is obvious. You don't need to 
you you don't want every team to handle this the CDN config and the create instance by themselves, right? You just uh, uh you just uh, build the common infra for them. Well, this solution is uh simple. It's just cloud. And for cloud, the only risk I guess is reliability. This is not only for front end but for all. Okay, you sh you you get your job done. You uh deploy your service, and now you need to monitoring the bugs, the statistics, statistics. Well, the solution is simple. You just have one tracking service, just as like same as the cloud. It has a risk of reliability. And now at last, you need to think how would you evolve with the with the trend, right? How would you improve your infra? Use te new technologies and make everyone happy. So the solution is you need to have a appropriate adoption plan. While for this part, you really need some expert who can foresee the future and understands the management, right? So make everyone happy. Make a plan. So many if there are have there are many developers, there are millions of ideas, millions of suggestions. How would you pick them? Pick them? How would you politely reject them? Right, so it's uh, it's about people. In a word, to summarize, to summarize all of this, the the front end infra is a game about live and die together. If we live, we live together. If we prosper, we prosper together. But if we die, we die together. So that's the core of front end infra. If we do without front end infra, we actually for each project we move seemingly faster. Because we actually, literally, we can do what we want, right? We can just freely without any other concerns. We can we consider less. We just focus on our own problem, and it is more startup ish. So every member might feel that like uh, challenging to do the task and feel well incentivized. The problem of this uh, without infra, uh, with uh, problem with this uh, scenario without front end infra. Is that the quantities of different projects actually varies, right? I'm not saying that the pro the quantities is low, but maybe only a handful of projects out of all the project is well maintained, and uh, but for all projects in long term, it will worsen, it will be worse and worse because we lack of this co collective uh, improvement, and in long term. Actually, we're moving slower, but it may. But for individual projects, it moves similarly faster. But considering the whole lifespan of this product, you're actually moving slower. With the front end infra, obviously, we move faster. With those all those like the design system and the sharing code, we could just quickly create an instance, drag some components, drag some modules, and ship and deploy it and get the the stats and just to move very fast, and we have a, a supposedly um, a better quantities, but the problem is that it actually needs investment. We need to spend a lot of money, right? Those maintenance is is not free, and also we need some ingenious people with with uh, the high level, uh, with uh, with experienced engineers to help us build this infra. So actually, it's all about money for people. It's about money. You need to hire more, uh, greater people, and also it's reliability. We need to, we need to stick on it. We need to realize this risk and then live with it. So this is a and, uh, for example, if you have some, uh, some a really really serious product, like the financial, uh, products like you're building a bank. Well, it's really important that. The other projects don't mess up with your bank, right? It has some uh, regulations of the from the government, so re reliability is a serious issue, right? So the we need to think about that as well. So which one should we choose, with it or without it? Actually, it depends. As we already summarized, it only pays off for large companies have a lot of projects and those. Investments about the front end infra could actually result in a lower cost for all the projects as a whole. But if you're just like you're a, only a, 
a startup, a small team, and you're only building a one or two or several projects, why bother building this front infra? Just to grab an instance from AWS and just to, just to do it free. Do it out, uh, do anything as you want just to get a problem done. Anyway, your project might be dead after several months, right? Why bother spending money and time on building something that is only usable, uh, useful for large companies? Okay, so that's it end for my slides here. Um, I've talked about uh, those possible areas that could could be, be uh, could be uh, saving money for the companies. If we have a front end infra, like uh, let's go over through it again. It's boilerplate, sharing code, sharing design, and building and testing, and serving and monitoring and evolving. So, yeah. That's it. Uh, hope you can have a better judgment about uh, whether using front end infra or not. If you are in a uh, large size company, I suggest that you suppose if there is still no front end infra, I suggest you try to, to propose to it and maybe just lead the building of this team. Yeah, good luck with your development. Happy coding. Bye bye.